Microsoft Excel has a really cool feature called What If Analysis and today I'm going to show you how to do a data table and there's two different data tables you can use so when you click on data at the top What If Analysis there is data table I'm gonna do two of them so let's go ahead and get started I've got in column A interest rate months finance amount so this could either be a car note or a house note. If it was a house note, 30 years times 12 is 360. If you want to go 15 years, that would be 180, 15 times 12. And then whatever your finance amount is for your house. So this could be a new house note, a refi, or it could be a car, new or used, it doesn't matter. Let me go back and leave it as a car to start off with. Your payment for 5%. 60 years, which is 5 years, 60 months, 24,000 is the PMT function. What interest rate are you looking for? B1. And you need to divide that by 12 because you pay your note monthly. Comma. Number of payments or number of periods. That's the number 60. B2. Comma. PV is present value. How much money do you have to borrow today to get that car? This is after a down payment. It's after a trade-in. The other two arguments, F, V, and type are not required. Press enter. There is your answer. It always shows as a negative number, so I'm going to double click and make it negative B3. So now it's positive. So your total payments is simply your monthly payment, and we're going to multiply that times the number of periods you need to pay it. 27,175. So therefore the interest paid is B6 minus how much you finance today for it, which is 24,000. 3,175. Remember the keyboard shortcut, control, and the key that's to the left of number one on your keyboard, it will show your formulas instead of your answer. And you just toggle back and forth. So these three right here, those are input cells. Those are just numbers I typed. These three down here are dependent cells because they're dependent on the input cells. So now let's do the data tables. I'm going to do two of them. The first one is called a one input data table. What I'm trying to figure out is if I have a different interest rate, what's my car note? So I'm going to start off at 0 0.275 and then 0 0.3 and let's autofill those down. And I'm going to stop at 7%. A 6% works. Home tab, let's make them percentages and increase the decimal. There's my interest rates. In F1, I've got to do this formula. A 3D reference equals, and it must be a dependent cell. I'm trying to figure out what's my payment going to be at those interest rates, so it's equals B5. I'm going to hide that in just one second. Highlight E1 to F15, data tab at the top, what if analysis, data table. I've got two options column and row. Notice they both say input, which means it's going to be one of these numbers over here. I'm running down column E with those percentages, 2.753. So it's going to be column input B1. Watch what happens when I click OK. That is my monthly car note for those different interest rates. Let's just make them look a little better. Home tab. It's up to you. Comma. If you don't like comma, go make it currency. Lose the decimals. If you want to hide that number right there, that's that 3D reference. Control 1. Custom. On your keyboard, 1 semicolon, 2, 3. Just trust me, it's 3. Don't do 1, don't do 2, do 3. Click OK. That number, that 3D reference is still there. I can see in the formula bar, but that is hidden. What's nice about this 
is I want to know how much interest I'm going to pay at these different interest rates. So let's just do equals B7. Should be increasing and it does. If I want to know the total payment, equals B6. So that is called a one input data table. Now let's do a two input. If I do a two input, I usually don't do the one input. I'm just showing you can do a one if you want. Here's a two. Uh, let's do, I'm over in J2. So now it's not just the interest rates. It's the interest rates and the finance amount. I'm going to put the interest rates across the top. Highlight both of those, autofill, six percent works, format them. That is going to be empty. I'm going to come right here. Actually, that's that's where I'm going to start. So one down, one to the left. I'm going to do. 22,000 because maybe I don't need a $24,000 car. Maybe I found something for 22,000. Let's do 22,500. I like both of those. Crosshairs. And let's take it out to 26,000. I'm going to click and sell I2 equals. I still have to do the 3D reference. So I'm still doing a data table, but I'm not doing a one input. I'm going to do a two. That's why I got interest rates and the finance amount. I don't know what the payment is. Highlight. Perfect. Data. What if analysis. Data table. So now I'm going to use both of these boxes. Going across the row right here are my interest rates. And notice again it says the word input. That's why I put this over here to help you just learn how to do this. B1, column input, running down the column I, or the finance amounts. So this is a two input data table. When I hit OK, perfect. Those are my monthly payments at those interest rates. There I go. What's really nice about a data table is you cannot delete just one specific cell. You'll get an error message. I click over here, hit delete, can't do it. And again, if I wanted to hide that, it would be Control-1, what's my bad, Control-1, Custom, 1, 2, 3. Good to go. It's still there. Hopefully that helps. So now you know how to use Microsoft Excel's data, what if analysis, data table. I'm going to follow up with data, what if analysis, goal seek, and scenario manager this week.